So I thought I'd talk through some of the colours that I used for Sterling here. So he's a grey thoroughbred, uh, he's got some lovely dapples and he's got some really, really interesting colours, um, you know, in his on his face. Now he's quite a, I'd, I'd consider him to be a relatively dark grey, um, but still trying to get those colours and everything into that grey fur can be quite challenging. Um, so I've used a variety of pencils in here and I've used, uh, you can see all of these, that's not all of them, but there's quite a few there. I've used polychromos, I've used um, pablos, I've used luminance and I've used some light fast as well. And it's really, really important when you're drawing a grey horse to kind of get other colours in there as well as your the, the ones that you'd expect, like the, the greys. Um, so what I've done is I've kind of, I did a base layer of all sorts of different colours. I might, uh, up here, I've done a base layer of something that's quite, that's quite cool. So using something like a cold grey one up here before I start putting any detail or anything like that in. Um, and then here you can see it's a little bit warmer. If I just zoom in a bit. Here you can see it's a little bit warmer. So using some much warmer uh, tones in that area there. So like a warm grey, um, you know, we've got the warm grey too here, but then we've got these sort of like pinky tones in there as well. Um, you know, so adding in perhaps like a very, very light um, glaze of something like a burnt sienna in over the top of those warm tones can kind of give this, this lovely sort of warm effect here. Um, and then when we come to areas like this bit here where we've got these little dips, these nuances um, as the hair kind of moves over the skull underneath it, it's very important to capture some of the, uh, the, the different colours and the shading and the shadows and everything in there. So what I've ended up using here is I've used a lot of different greys in here, but one of the, the colours that I've used quite a bit and I found really, really useful is... Oh, here we go. The uh, the raw umber ten percent. Now the raw umber ten percent is actually sort of quite a browny color when you put it in. Well, it's sort of like a yellowy browny color. So adding it just in little places, just to kind of add a little bit extra um, color in with the grays, really really helps, especially with these sort of lighter tones up here as well, um, kind of in here around underneath his eye. And then we can use other colours in there as well to sort of help mould and shape all of the, um, the well, how, how the skin and the hair sort of sits over the top of the bone structure underneath. Now, a stronger colour would be the Pablo. This is the light ochre that I've used. And I've used that in places like in here and in here just to kind of get that but that bit of a shadow but not make it stand out too much and then bring a little bit of the yellowy feel into some of the shadows as well um, and then again onto sort of like his the bridge of his nose here and into some of these dapples here just to kind of show that there's more there is color in there so um, his eye was particularly um, let's just zoom in there a little bit So his eye was particularly challenging in that there isn't really much colour in there and there's not really much, uh, you can't really see the pupil or anything like that, but you have got these sort of um, very subtle um, catch lights in there. And it's really, really important to, to capture those catch lights, even the sort of duller ones as well as the brighter ones. And that's what's going to get you this really nice sort of soft looking eye without having to put a ton of colour in there. So this is just greys and black in here, probably a little bit of dark blue as well. Um, the eyelashes I created, I sort of worked round them to begin with. So I left the paper clear of colour. Um, and then worked a little bit of colour into them to sort of like show the uh, the definition in the eyelashes. And then if I needed to, just bring the slice tool in and just sort of um, nick out a little bit of colour there. Um, again, really, really important to sort of get your texture and everything and your fur and everything working properly over areas like this on the... Um, above the eye here um, you know we need the character of that the shaping 
Um, and we also need to sort of see the, um, the, the direction of the hair and everything like that. So I've added some cold colours into there. So quite a bit of cold grey in there and then some warmer colours as we come down towards the eye. Um, the how I created this area here, again, I started with um, not a flat layer of colour, but um, again, I probably used the cold grey uh, cold grey one in there to begin with and I would actually indicate this texture as I'm drawing so I put this texture in um, and then once this texture is down just on one layer I can then go in with greys and dark blue and black and just add in these extra little um, sort of bits of colour to, to show the texture um, and what I like to do is I like to work upwards so I, I'll use my pencil in an upwards motion like that going in underneath. So it almost feels like you're going in underneath layers of hair. And that gives you um, a little bit more of a realistic feel to your hair. Um, and then a lot down here. This is all very warm. So I stuck with the warm colours. Again, when we come over to the cheek area here, this is, um, you know, a little bit of blue in there. I've actually started to use at the end. I started to bring in the um, the Derwent Light Fast Nightshade. Um, it's like a really, really dark purple. And I brought a little bit of extra colour into there as well. Um, as I have in the dapple areas there. So I've brought a little bit of this light shade, uh, nightshade into the dapple areas here just to give it an extra depth and also just a touch of colour. Now, when it comes to doing the, uh, the leather work, so the leather work, this is um, the, the pastel mat that I'm working on. So it, you're... you're it's always going to be a little bit frustrating when you're creating uh, something that's really, really smooth because pastel mat obviously has, has got a grain to it. But you can get that smoothness just by sort of like doing a few layers. But something like this bit here, um, I started off with the burnt sienna and I put a layer of the burnt sienna in and then I moved on to using the Caput Mortem Violet in over the top of the burnt sienna. So bringing in sort of like bits of the Caput Morton Violet into there uh, and then using the black to create the shadows here and to create this shadow coming in here and then more of the Burnt Sienna in over the top, you know, little touches of the uh, Caput Morton Violet and then all of these little stitches were taken out after I'd put the layers in, they were taken out using the slice tool. Um, so it's the, it's my manual slice pen cutter here um, and I just sort of nicked those little um, stitches out with the slice that's how I created those so it's quite a simple technique but really effective and the same here so this this rain here this one has got sort of like a, a, a bluey tinge to it so I put my Caput Morton Violet in my Burnt Sienna in and then I used the um, cold grey one to go in over the top and create uh, this highlight here which is sort of like quite a cool highlight and that then also just smooths everything there and it looks like we've got the highlight on the leather there it works really really nicely um, the bit area here was done very quite quickly actually again uh, these the curb chain here all I did was I just put in shapes so I just drew in black lines where the shapes were and then just came in with a warm came in with a warm grey four um, and just filled in sort of like these little bits in here and then again with the rest of the bit just bringing in sort of like something like a warm grey four just putting in some very um, light quite quite quick shading and then specific areas like these dark these lines here just putting plossing those in quite quickly um, and then I've got a little bit of pinky colour in there as well um, I think I used the I think I used the granite rose Pablo for that and um, just very gently just sort of touching in a little bit of pinky colour in there just to give it an extra something but I like to keep things like that really um, 
simple so I like to keep areas like this quite simple and it's almost like a less is more so you get everything in the right perspective you get nice sort of clear shapes and round shapes um, and then the the shading and everything I try to keep quite simple and that's worked quite well um, and that's that's kind of it really the forelock area this I did with um, reds blues blacks greys um, I brought in the dark areas first so I started off by getting the shadowy areas in quite roughly um, and then worked over the top with sort of like lighter colours you can get the light over the dark with with the pastel mat worked in over the over the top with the light colours and then as I started to build my layers I could then start to build in these like little tiny hairs stray hairs start to get a feel for the real layering of the uh, the forelock and then of course you know when we bring it down over the top of the um the brow band there you know and we've got the shadow area there as well which kind of makes it look more realistic as well so the size of the leather is actually quite small so this is about a centimeter and then here this is only about four millimeters so um, i had to work I had a magnifying glass to sort of help me get into some of those areas but um, you know it is quite small to be getting quite a bit of detail in um, and then areas like here on the neck um, I would use something like I plot all my colour in and then I would use something like a paper stump just to gently just smudge out very 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 gently not all over but just you know in the odd place where you want something that's a little bit softer um, and then all of the dapples in here I would use my putty eraser so I'd put plot the color in first and then use my putty eraser just to gently pick out the dapples in there which were again worked really really nicely so um, that's that's kind of it really um, you know, it was a really, really nice um, portrait to draw. Um, just, you know, when you're drawing grey horses, don't forget that there's there's a, a, a huge amount of colour that goes into them rather than just the greys. And if you can think about your shadows, you know, adding little bits of yellow into shadows, adding little bits of pink into shadows, purples into shadows, it really, really helps to, to bring a piece to life. Um, you know, and uh, and softening things. If you're using pastel mat, you know, yes, it's going to be about the layering, but you can create really nice soft outlines, you know, nice soft fur, um, and yet you can get the lovely sort of sharp areas in there as well. Mm -hmm. 